Hello and welcome to the eighth and final episode of A Beginner's Guide to Paramix Discovery. My name is Malcolm Calvert. I'm the director of Paramix Microsimulation. And it's been a real pleasure to get to share with you over the last couple of months some of the basics of Paramix Discovery. And I'm really hoping that it's helped you to get started and develop your own Paramix models. Now, so far, we have created our own networks from scratch using nodes and links. We've looked at different types of junctions. And in the last episode, we added zones into our model and got some traffic on there. Now, in this last episode, we're going to look in more detail at the traffic behaving in the model and try and troubleshoot some of the different aspects of that at different junctions. So let's get started. So I've got the network in front of me that we've been working on so far through this beginner's guide. And in the last episode, we got some traffic onto that network and we can see that traffic in operation uh, by clicking on the play button down in the bottom left. So when I click play, it starts the clock running and I can pause it uh, by hitting the pause button. Now I can also achieve that by using the space bar. So if I zoom in on my network and hit the space bar, you can see the traffic starts and hit space bar again, it stops. So I can start and stop my traffic using the space bar. Now you'll notice that the traffic is moving incredibly quickly in this network, too quickly really to see what's going on. And that's because by default, it's running at its maximum speed, which is currently about 600 times real time. So we can drop that down by uh, using this drop down menu. I'm going to set that to five times real time. Now when I click on the main window and press play, I can see the traffic moving at uh, a speed that is much easier to observe. Now I'm zoomed in at the priority junction, which we developed a few episodes ago. And I'm going to press play and just observe the behavior at this junction. Now the first thing to do is really just watch it and see if it makes sense. Does it look right? Does it look like what would be happening on the road? I think so far so good. I can see, for example, that the vehicles on the side arm are giving way uh, to vehicles on the main line. And when they have a gap, they then will pull out and take it. Now there's several other tools that are available within Paramix Discovery to interrogate the behavior in a little more detail. For example, I can select a vehicle by clicking on it. And this brings up some information about the vehicle itself. So it tells me, for example, uh, the speed that it's doing. So at the moment, this vehicle is doing zero miles per hour because it's uh, waiting for other traffic before it will uh, make its turn. I can see the origin zone. I can see some information about the lanes that it's using uh, and the destination zone at the bottom. So uh, by clicking on the vehicle, you can find out a little bit about it. My priority junction seems to be working pretty well. So let's go and have a look at the next one. So this is the signal control junction that we developed in one of the previous episodes. And if I hit the space bar, I can start to see the traffic flowing through the junction. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, which is different from the priority junction, is that we've got these uh, signal arrows, which turn red and green. And they represent when the traffic signal is green or when it's red, so when traffic can go or not. And these should link directly to what we've coded in the signal editor. So we can see here the traffic goes green and vehicles move out. And what we're really looking for now is, is the behavior what we would expect. Now, for the most part, I think it is. I think the two side arms like this one uh, the traffic is moving out of those uh, quite sensibly. It also looks sens sensible from here. Now what you notice on this arm is that when the lights go green, the lane point moves forward. So you may remember that we made that a stacking lane point. And so the traffic will queue here rather than back at this. And that's appropriate because that's reflecting what would happen in reality. 
So the arm of the junction that doesn't quite look right here is this one. And we can already see something odd about the lane definition. If I just pause this, we can see that there isn't a trajectory line coming out uh, of this lane too. So something's not quite right. And the reason is we've got no uh, trajectory line coming out, uh, but we also know that the right turn movement is barred because that's how it was set up in the signal editor. So the vehicles in this lane are a little bit lost. They're not quite sure what to do. Also in this lane, we've got vehicles which are turning left and moving straight ahead. So all of the flow is in lane one. And if I scan back through here, you can see that there's a disproportionate amount of traffic in lane one. It's actually going to be having a knock on impact on the roundabout as well. So the key thing we need to address is the turn lane movements here. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my edit network tab and in my styles panel, I'm going to turn on movements. I'm going to click on the arrowhead and I'm going to make sure that the straight ahead movement is in lane two and off in lane one, like so. So I'm clicking on that circle to turn uh, the lane movements on and off in given lanes. Now when I click away, I can see a different configuration. So everything going straight ahead will be in lane two, everything turning left will be in lane one. So let's save that, go back to my visualize. I need to refresh to push that change through and you can see that that immediately updates the trajectory lines to look much more sensible for this junction. And then I'm going to hit play again and get the traffic going. Let's go up to maximum speed to load it on quickly and I'll drop that down. And now we can see the traffic behaving much better than it was. So I'm looking at the third junction in our model now, the roundabout. And just like the other ones, the first thing I want to do is just watch it for a while and see how the vehicles are behaving. And then if I see something that doesn't look right, I can go and try and address it. Now one example uh, of something that doesn't look brilliant is when vehicles are coming out of this lane here and going into lane two. You can see that they actually almost need to turn right before they go left. So the movement that they're doing there, the swept path, is not what we'd expect to happen in reality. Now a good way to adjust that would be to go back to my Edit Network tab to turn on my lane points, which are here. Um, I also want to turn on my trajectories and I'll use the hotkey T for that. And then when I select a lane point and move it, I can see that it moves my trajectory lines. Now by moving this lane point further forward, I'm getting a smoother path along here. As well as moving the lane point position, I can also change the angle. And so you can see the impact that changing the angle would have. So you can move the position and the angle to get a good swept path. If I save that, go back to visualize, refresh, I'll start the simulation. Again, I'll put it up to maximum speed to get some traffic on. And now I can see a much smoother uh, movement as vehicles come out of here and into lane two. Now there's one other thing at this roundabout, if I hit play again, which doesn't look quite right. And that's to do with how the vehicles are behaving at this location. What you might notice when a vehicle is in lane two here, if I click on it, is that it actually moves from lane two directly into lane one. Now that's not great because obviously we want vehicles from lane one to move into lane one, from two into two, and to continue around the roundabout. And if you remember from the previous episode, we set up our roundabout lanes so both lanes would be utilized. So the question is, why is this not happening? And the answer is actually further upstream. 
and if I drag up to here, it's at this location. And you can see that we get down to uh, one lane in this location. And what's happening is that vehicles, before they enter the roundabout, know that they need to be in lane one here, and they're moving into lane one very early. But what should actually happen is that vehicles use both lanes and then move into lane one at some point along here. And as a modeler, we can influence how that behavior happens. And the way that we influence that behavior is using a feature called signposting. And signposting is something that gets applied to nodes. So if I go back to my edit network tab and select node 11, and open up my properties for node 11, you'll see here we've got this feature called signpost distance. Now there's a default that will appear, it's 250 meters in an urban environment like this. And that means that 250 meters back from the node, vehicles are aware of what will happen at that node or at that junction, so they can prepare for it. Now what I want to do is drop that signposting down. Let's make it 50. And if I go to my styles and click on hazards and signposts here and select my node again, you can see that that 50 meters is drawn on the network. And what that means is that the vehicles won't be aware of the need to drop down to lane one until they reach about this point here. So with that in mind, we should see both lanes of traffic being used as they go through the roundabout. So let's go back to visualize and see if that's happened. We'll save the model, we'll refresh again, hit play. Again, I'm gonna to go to my maximum speed to get some traffic on, drop it back down to five miles per hour. And let's zoom in on the roundabout. And now what we should see is that vehicles in lane one use lane one and vehicles in lane two use lane two and I can click on one and observe it going through the junction like so. So that brings us to an end of episode eight and an end to this beginner's guide to Paramix Discovery. In this episode we've looked at those three junctions that we created and observed the traffic on them at the priority junction, the signal control junction and the roundabout. And we've looked at ways to troubleshoot and check the vehicle behavior and improve it. So how to select a vehicle. We've also looked at how to change the lane configuration to get some appropriate behavior. We've moved lane points. And then finally, we looked briefly at the signpost distance. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this series, that it's been helpful and useful for you. But this is just the beginning. There's so much more to learn about Paramix Discovery. And we have lots of resources to help you do just that. For example, we've got three different training courses which we run in Edinburgh and London throughout the year. And we can also offer those training courses on a private basis in your offices. You can find out more details on our website. We've also got a support center available for our license holders which contains lots of useful resources like other video tutorials and knowledge base articles. And if you've been in our YouTube channel watching this beginner's guide, you'll also find lots and lots of other videos showing you different features within Paramix Discovery. So we really want to help you to get to the next level to continue to learn and develop in Paramix Discovery and please get in touch with us to let us know how we can do that. Once again, thank you for watching this beginner's guide series. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks and bye for now.